Hey everyone, how's it going? Hope you're doing well. Hope you're having a wonderful day. Enjoying your memo Memorial Day weekend. So, I hope, uh, you know, you're having a great day. So, interesting. The longest sentence yet for anything at January 6th was handed down to a dude that didn't even enter the Capitol building. 18 years. 18 years. And it's kind of travesty. It's kind of scary. What do they say? The left. Like, how does it, this is a D.C. jury, D.C. prosecutors, and a D.C. judge. So, I don't know. They're fucked, man. They're fucked. Like, you had anything to do with January 6th? I don't know. There's obviously going to be an appeal. Like, no one sitting anywhere for January 6th in D.C. is going to get a fair jury. And this man, I don't think he got a fair jury. Uh, Stuart Rhodes, 18 years. What do they say, you know? The Democrats, they'll bail you out of jail. You burn down the country. You know, Kamala Harris, her... <laughs> fucking bailing out rioters but uh you weren't even in the capital and you leave some text messages to your friends that somehow is, i don't know dude it's kind of scary like really it is but yeah um mercy for my friends and the law for my enemies so the saying goes so let's uh hop right in yeah we got here boom uh, as you know, man, I, I watch this shit religiously every Sunday, and uh, I love the show. But they're talking about, um, you know, Mr. Rhodes, and we're going to hop in right there. The government has become increasingly involved. Every time the government gets involved, either with its regulatory arms or with its funny money dollars, things become less accessible. <laughs> I know. And it, That's it's, like... I, Kyle Kolinsky is like, yeah, college is expensive. You know, we should just nationalize it. I'm like, yeah, I'm not surprised you said that, Kyle. But maybe there was like a thing that happened that you could think of where, yeah, like the government stepped in and started subsidizing colleges and universities. And what do you think would be, because the universities and colleges aren't stupid, this government guaranteed money, they cranked up the tuition. And now you got motherfuckers, yeah, fucking <laughs> six-figure debt. You know, eighty thousand dollars in debt, and it's like, yeah, maybe we should stop doing that. But that's not what this video is about. You should go watch that video. I hate Kyle Kolinsky. Fuck him. Secular talk. I just want to hear. I want to hear her answer to this question. It's a very simple one, but I, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna get. Well, you have to think that she's ideologically motivated. She doesn't actually care about about the outcome, the material outcome. She wants really? to change. Oh, she wants AOC, to make people yeah. woke. That's that's her entire agenda. She doesn't care if like roads are good or you know if people have access to health care she doesn't really give a shit about any of this she, yeah, she she's wants bafflingly to accept stupid. all these alternative <laughs> like, lifestyles and that's like the, the basis the of tippy, her tippy world talk. pride month is coming up after all alternative lifestyles are all the rage anyway that's where we stand with our debt ceiling and our national debt um, AOC is I, what happens when someone gets an economics degree and becomes a communist it's like I'm sorry what, how, how does that happen you got a degree in economics, right? And you became a communist? Huh? How does that make any sense? Nothing she says makes any sense. This is like economically illiterate. I, I was talking last week. Will Biden actually try this 14th Modern Amendment nonsense? Theory. I kind of hope that he would that, so I can see that play out. I don't even get that. Instead, it's the same crap that you always get. Yeah. A bunch of members of Congress going to going to D.C., putting together a, a massive, who knows how many pages this bill is going to be. Nobody will read it. They'll all say it sucks. They'll all vote for it. They'll all campaign against it. And we'll do it again in a couple of years. Yeah. Yeah. That's how it is. Pretty much what we get. It's yep. super boring. I'm sick of this. Yeah. I probably should have. It was foolish of me to even entertain any option or possibility otherwise. No, I mean, you got to have a little hope, right? Yeah. Well, One of the two of us has to have a little hope. I'm just hoping for entertainment Give up at hope. this point. I'm not even hoping for no salvation hope. for my country. No help I'm around just here. hoping. Man, he's a bitch. Fucking. No, I'm playing. No. No, there's give up hope when it comes to Congress. Pit of snakes. Every time. They'll be like, I'll never do that again. And they'll go right back and do it again. So. <laughs> and, for entertainment. And they're yeah. denying me that. Truly, these are tough times. <laughs> <sighs> well, before the top of the hour, we got time to talk about the January 6th sentences. If you want to do that. outrageous. Yeah, yeah uh, I well, think this is outrageous, so we'll get to dude. This is scary, Rhodes but I and... mean, the great thing about America is there's an endless appeals process. So, I don't know. This is extreme, and you can get an appellate court to say, no, the lower court, like, in the criminal trial was wrong, and this is... We'll see. 
we'll see. I don't know. Uh, I like the Oath Keepers. I like the Proud Boys. Like, people are like, those are right-wing extremists. No, they're white supremacists. It's so stupid. No, they're not, dude. <laughs> that is not what they're about. Um, and Rico, like, he was the fucking head of the Proud Boys. Also, I guess, kind of turned out to be a fed. <laughs> like, but, yeah, dude, like, he... I don't know. Like, people talk about the Proud Boys and the Oath Keepers as if they're just, like... I don't know, killing people or doing, you know, like, no, they pretty much just started as a, like, countermeasure to Antifa, and, like, that's just all it is, they just protect crowds, for the most part, like, and then, uh, they, they got, and they I got love Gavin McGinnis, he set up the Proud Boys, he's the founder of the Proud Boys, actually, we got him, he was he just is... a humble white trash guy, he literally didn't do nothing. Uh, it seems like they had trouble building a compelling case against him, but... Uh, Did they? He got four and a half years. Well, the jury bought it, I guess. They just couldn't come up with serious crimes to pin to him. That black guy murdered somebody. Uh, which one? <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, yeah, right. which one are you talking about? M a Minneapolis light rail oh. guy. Well, uh, well yeah, it, it looked... got uh, no charges. Like, I don't know what the fuck the process... Uh, clearly, the dude pushed this motherfucker on the tracks, killing him. Like, he... You see his leg underneath the track is fucked up. And the prosecutor's like, well, I don't see anything in that video. You're free to go, sir. I'm like, what? I don't know. So many outrageous shit. Like, the the lawfare. The, the weaponization of, like, the courts. Like I said, yeah. <laughs> Just, or mercy for my friends. The law for my enemies. It's like... It's pretty murdery really on about. the video, but I guess the prosecutor... Kind of scary, but not surprising. I'm really not surprised. Well, we uh, we now have <laughs> any of you? by no, far the surprised. longest January 6th prison sentence, at least for the time being. Again, there will be an opportunity in August for the Proud Boys on the same charge. But uh, U.S. District That's Judge Amit Mehta, it's like, Mehta it's like, sentenced like, no, the founder even of in the fucking capital, Stuart like... Rhodes to 18 years in prison this week after he was convicted of sed uh, seditious conspiracy back in November. Seditious conspiracy in more plain language means a plot to stop government Yeah, function. to overthrow the government. Yeah. Like, that's pretty much what it means. And this is, like, what they charged him on and gave him 18 fucking years. And this is an older guy, right? So, I don't know, man. Like, I, I highly doubt... If he appeals this, I think he can get an appeal. But I've only read so much, man. I, I briefly read something on this the other day, but there's, like, other shit I want to read and, you know, I have to fucking work and... Have to make videos and like, so I'm not like really well versed in like exactly how this trial went down. But Matt and Blonde are saying it was utter bullshit. So, or even to overthrow and I trust the them. government you know, I, I by the, force. The so it doesn't necessarily mean that you committed violent action. Just that you had a plot in place. Two or more people conspiring or agreeing to a plot to commit this violent action. It's the exact same. And this same was thing. something of a defunct charge, right? Well, it's been very, it's very, very rarely prosecuted. Yeah, it's dude, because sedition is like, yeah, it's not very common. Yeah. Um, it's an extreme charge to level at this guy, considering he wasn't even in the, in the Capitol building. And the text message that they're talking about is like, just like some hypothetical. He's not saying, in fact, he said, don't bring your guns to the Capitol. Like, don't. He didn't even go in the Capitol. He told no one to go in the Capitol. Like, he didn't even do that. Like, but they're saying, like, he sent a text message saying that America could have a civil war one day and it's best to keep your weapons in case. And it's like, yeah, he wasn't, like, specifically talking about January 6th. He specifically said, don't bring your guns to the Capitol. But this is the justice that these fucking cities eke out if you're, you know, <laughs> on the wrong, like, ideology or the, have the wrong politics. Civil war era law which isn't that justice. they're using here. And... I looked at the history of it when I was looking at the Proud Boys stuff. There have been a handful of successful prosecutions, and I'm talking under five. Yeah, and the ones that's that how fucking yeah, this is to extreme to, like, to charge someone with that. Often foreign terrorists who either committed or very clearly <laughs> plotted terrorist actions. Excuse I'm talking me. like Sorry. built the bomb and were in the process of going to blow something up. Yeah. Yeah. So in the context pretty extreme. Of the Proud Boys and. Stuart Rhodes and the Oath Keepers, they're taking spicy texts and spicy Discord chats and acting like that is a plot to overthrow the country. So the judge said Rhodes presents an ongoing threat and peril to this country and the very fabric of our democracy. 
I hate when people talk like that. Our democracy, our democracy. I know this is a judge and, you know, I don't know, people use this language, but when I hear people say, like, talk about our democracy, I just, like, roll my eyes, dude. I want to be like, first of all, we're not a democracy. We're a constitutional republic. And, um, yeah, like, I just hate, like, you hear, like, the Washington Post, Dem democracy dies in darkness. It's like, okay, you fucking liars, you smear merchants. Uh, our democracy is under threat January 6th and our democracy is like God I just roll my fucking eyes dude I'm just like, I don't care you people don't believe in democracy you don't believe maybe they do like maybe they really do do think just like yeah the majority fucking well if that's I mean whatever these people no fuck like the, when these people talk about democracy our democracy it's like I just roll my eyes dude it's like again mercy for my friends the law for my enemies or, you know, these censors, they loved it when Twitter was their playground, right? Now they're all pissed off and got all fucked up. Elon allows people to speak. It's great, right? It's great. But, no. The judge said Rhodes' uh, conduct amounted to terrorism, which oh, is terrorism, why the judge huh? gave it a, uh, is that so? a sentence on the high end of the sentencing guidelines. So again, much like the Proud Boys case, prosecutors relied on messages between Rhodes and other Oath Keepers members. Rhodes never actually entered the Capitol on January 6th, but prosecutors <laughs> say he was like yeah. a general issuing orders from afar. He was the puppet master of all of this. And these are the worst of his puppet master messages. This, this shows he clearly orchestrated all of this. He said things like, quote, we aren't getting through this without a civil war. Uh, a quote that I'm pretty sure could be lifted directly from this show many times. Yeah, like, that's scary. Um, and like, that's crazy, dude. That That is insane. And he's like, you keep your rifles, you'll need, like, something. And it's like, this is not related to January 6th. In fact, he told people not to bring their rifles to the Capitol. And he didn't even go in the Capitol. Yeah, so. I don't think people and understand quote, like how many people the were there defense that day is to us see Trump. And our rifles. Again, a constitutionally correct wow, statement. Wow, that's incredible. It's so nonspecific. Well, it, it would never... I don't know how this is going to play out. I think according to the Supreme Court's incitement standard, this would not satisfy any sort of uh, of legally actionable Ugh. incitement. Yeah. But this he's is just making like... A, he's making a statement that is like abstract right it's not he's not he's not saying like we need to <laughs> start a civil war on january 6th it's not what he's saying it's like people say this all the time yeah this country is going down the path of civil war in fact more and more people think that than ever and it's like scary you know and then you see the justice system and this man getting 18 years for this bullshit dude it's like see, he, juries what? and yeah, D.C. prosecutor, so all that's out the window. But, again, I love this country, the appeals now, process. Um, notably, neither the Oath Keepers nor anybody else, of course, brought rifles to the Capitol on January 6th. So it's really weird that he's saying the rifles are our final defense, but also nobody bring them. Yeah, right. This is an order from your general. Okay. Uh, and to date, no Oath Keepers have been convicted of any violent crime on January 6th at all, including Stuart Rhodes, who again was not at the Capitol, or at least inside of it. So he couldn't have committed any violent crime himself because he wasn't there. But we're still going to have Capitol Police officers test... Yeah, that's crazy. He wasn't even in the fucking building, and they still have Capitol Police officers come up, like, before the jury and be like, yeah, the dude's dropping in bombs. Or is that something else? I th I th maybe that was a congressional hearing, not the jury. Or, or maybe, mom, maybe it was. About how... Stuart Rhodes somehow personally terrorized them. So remember the, uh, I should have grabbed the clip. Harry Dunn, no, not the guy from Dumb and Dumber. Harry Dunn is a, uh, is a, is a Capitol Police officer, and he's the, the black guy who did that, uh, am I, am I thinking the right name? Was it Harry Dunn in Dumb and Dumber? Before I smear him. Yes, dude. I don't know. I don't I'll know. look that up in a minute. Yes, I might have got that wrong. I'm a 90s kid, dude. Like, I know, yeah. In it, whatever. Harry Dunn is a Capitol Police officer, and uh, he, he's a black Capitol Police officer, and during some of the congressional testimony earlier, he claimed that the crowd was calling him the N-word the entire day, just chanting the N-word yeah. at him. So and he, he says. said the hard R N-word in front of the congressional committee. 
And even though January 6th is probably the most filmed event of all time, the, nobody could ever produce video of this, just like Brian Sicknick getting hit with a fire extinguisher. Those yeah. are the two videos. Yeah, they never going to find that one. That's how they say he... And then, dude, they put that dude in the rotunda. Like, they gave him in the Capitol building. Like, he, his body was, like, laid in state, which is a huge honor, you know? And, you know, I mean, whatever. I mean, I, like, nothing against this officer, but he didn't die because he was hit in the head with a fire extinguisher. This did not happen. People said that for the longest time. It's like, yeah, no, not a thing. And when the Republicans took over the House and gave, like, all the footage to Tucker Carlson's team, like, they specifically point out Sidnick, and he's like, no, at no point does he ever get hit with a fucking... Um, and then they got rid of Tucker Carlson. So, yeah, it's a world we live in. Yeah, um, <laughs> what to say about that? Like, they just let this go on, and they're like, we're going to put him in. And, and it, it was like, the dude had, like, a heart attack, I think, if I remember right. And God bless him, you know, like, I, he was a police officer, respect the service, you know, um, sorry anyone died, but, like, they made it out like he was murdered by this mob on January 6th, and it just wasn't the case. And then, as more information came out, it all fell apart. But they wanted that to be the case, and they let him lie in state at the Capitol building. <laughs> but, but Harry Dunn uh, gave some testimony at Stuart Rhodes' sentencing. And he said, I used to enjoy coming to work every day, proud to that be a police be Nancy officer, Pelosi, but the defendant the took all that away from me. So if it wasn't for Stuart Rhodes and his text to his friends about, uh, about maybe we're going to have a civil war someday and also hang on to your rifles because that's your last defense. If it wasn't for that, Harry Dunn could enjoy his job as a Capitol Police yeah, officer. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Then they brought in um, Christopher Owens, who's also a, well, he's a, a metro D.C. Metro police officer, who said, quote, my physical traumas and bruises have healed, but the emotional trauma stays with me to this day. What a bitch. Okay. <laughs> Stuart Rhodes did not attack either Fucking of these men. He's blonde. I love you, Stuart blonde. Stuart Rhodes did not assault either of these men. Stuart Rhodes was not even there. Stuart Rhodes also did not tell anyone to attack these people. Yeah. And even if he did, he got 18 that years. there was a text that said, um, Harry Dunn is a bitch and an N-word. You should punch him. Yeah. <laughs> Wouldn't matter. Well, is that 18 years in prison? No, in any other of course context, not. it's not. It, it, you could call it a crime. I mean, I'm sure it would be prosecutable. This is scary, dude. But the but left, they don't care, years. dude. They don't care. These prosecutors, the like these leftist cities, like they're not fair. They do not care. They are not. <laughs> Lady Justice is not blind, and they would probably object to calling it Lady Justice. I'm sure. <laughs> Trans justice, yeah, that's more accurate. Yeah, there we go. I kind of like that. We should stick with that. They'll be like, "That's hate speech." Yeah. No, it's not hate Rhodes speech. It's some fucking joke. Say Shut up. that he will appeal. Well, good. Yeah. I'm sure there God, will be no justice. Goddamn censorship. Uh, it is Harry Dunn in in Dumb and Dumb. Twitter. Although, I don't know. Dumb and Dumber, he has Looking more and more Harry like I just put my Harry videos Dunn there. Avoid dude. Christmas. Deal with oh. so much bullshit from YouTube. I have to you know, walk on that show. guy that we talked about. He got four and a half years. Four. How dirty were his feet? <laughs> they were, to be fair, they were pretty dirty. Okay. He um, was a well, retired Arkansas four years. police fighter. And all he did really was put his feet on Nancy Pelosi's or desk. firefighter, right? He what did I say? Police, police fighter in the context. Of <laughs> yes, he did. Let's hear that again. She's a police fighter. He did not fight any police that day. Okay. <laughs> he he was a not. retired Arkansas police fighter. And all he did really was put his feet police on Nancy fighter. Pelosi's or desk. Or firefighter, right? He what did I say? Police, police fighter in the context of January 6th. Yeah, it's hilarious. Did I say like, police fighter? Yeah, yeah. No freaking way. He's not a police fighter. He did wow, no police that, fighting. that's a Freudian slip. He didn't know yeah. he was a firefighter. <laughs> no police fighting. Um, and he was given 54 months in prison and three years of supervised yeah. release. Retired police fighter. <laughs> Additional charges included theft of government property, which turned out not to be true. They were saying that he stole some of Nancy Pelosi's letterhead, but he actually wrote her a yeah, and he was, like, walking around. It was the same dude with a podium or something, but he, like, he was p trying to put it back, or he left, like, he, I don't know. Maybe it's not the same no, guy. No, and bled all over it because he was getting I think that's the same guy. I, I know who this dude is. He yeah, put so his feet on Nancy Pelosi's desk. They did not. They convicted oh, him okay. of civil disorder and obstruction of an official proceeding. Um, oh, okay. Four and a half and years. You put your, your dirty feet, your peasant uh, feet, on the fucking on the fucking feet of Nancy Pelosi's desk, or Nancy Pelosi's desk. Yeah. Weapon. 
but he had a he had like a taser or a stun gun, but it didn't have any batteries in it. Oh, so is that uh, that's a crime? You can't carry that in the capital. Is that the is that Correct. the thing? Okay. Yeah, yeah. You without a battery. Batteries he was like convicted not. on the felony charges of civil disorder and obstruction of an official proceeding. So I what about they... parading? Didn't they get him on parading? They got him parading and or demonstrating in the Capitol building. Yeah. Actually, no, he wasn't convicted on that. Oh, he wasn't. But, no. That's like so uh, four, four, four and a half years. years. Didn't steal anything. You know, show me the man, and I'll show you. I don't know, dude. Like, if you're gonna get, I mean, if he would have stolen something, would he've got like the same amount of time? No, they probably would give him. They probably would give him twenty years. Not to, no, not twenty, but yeah, I don't know. I don't this think this is justice. Very, very concerned. Show especially me the man. I'll show you the parading. Guy. Yeah, really. Okay. Uh, especially with this previous guy, like any number of those things have and will be said on this show. Oh yeah, I. I Seriously, if you're if, going to jail now, you're the you're the ringleader. You're the ringleader, Matt and Blonde. Yeah, your show is fucks. So the moment someone gets involved in some state capital or I don't know an, another January six, and they're like, yeah, Matt and Blonde, fucking. <laughs> they said this, and it could be I don't know. I you had text messages with him, and he's you're kind of the leader in the sense that you have all these people that watch your show that listen to you, and they all went to the capital, and a couple of them. And you told it. This is so stupid, dude. It's like it's scary. It's not. It's not even. It's beyond stupid. It's scary. But let him. Someone explain out it. I mean, there committed. Crazy. Let's say someone in the audience of that's this what show, the oath keeper did. Uh, committed a crime of some sort. I'm not saying January sixth, but just take any sort of crime like that. I'm sure that they could probably plausibly connect something that you said. Yeah, but that's bullshit. <laughs> I hope this dude gets I like said something. That someone maybe else even said on the call like show something in our Discord on appeal, server. I don't know. Yeah, if they, if we want to play this game where generic statements about possible violence Hold on. are applicable, DC to... is like a weird place, like the <laughs> Washington's District of Columbia. It's like a weird carved out zone. Like if there's an appeal process, it does go outside of DC, right? Because technically, not part of any other state. I haven't even thought of this. Can the Supreme Court appeal? I mean, they have, like, like both original and appellate jurisdiction, so they could. I don't know. Is it, like, because it's in D.C., does that make it, like, I don't know. I don't know how that works. Like, does it just appeal to another far-left D.C. fucking court? Hmm. I don't know how that works. Anyone knows? Like, I'm, Pacific I'll have to look into that. Like, the appellate well, process screwed, in D.C. Right? goes like, outside only, of, like, D.C., right? Or does it just is, go to uh, another far left-wing appellate well, court? I have no yeah. idea. It's it's the counter-weaponization or it's just leaving the entire system. It's it's backing off these people and say, I don't recognize your legal system anymore. Or you and have to counter all of it, you have to I don't have any idea the how... Thing, really, I mean, there are, there's, there are incredi incredibly the stringent of, like, standards for uh, how specific you have to be for it to be ordained a threat, you know? And, and it's not part of a circuit yeah. court, I wouldn't think, right? It's its own. So, uh, God. well, I just, I, I hope in his prison cell they get him, uh, they give him a congressional desk like that so he can put his feet up. I can't, four and a half years for this. Yeah. This is asinine. Anyway. No, and, it is asinine. Not that 18 years for Stuart Rhodes is any, is any less of a joke. I mean, that's, that's completely insane. The guy's how old? He's got to be, I don't know, what, he's got to be in his 50s minimum. That's, that's probably something. This is major time. Assuming he he serves the full sentence. I don't know, dude. Yeah, assuming that I I think he's got a good uh, ap appeal, but got to be something close to an effective life sentence for this guy. He will live the majority of the rest of his years in prison, if not all of them, unless they get him out on appeal or unless he gets some sort of deal to get out early. Eighteen years. Why do you keep running out of space? God damn it. Well. Next, we'll get to uh, to the happenings at Target throughout the week, but we should take a break and catch up with our chat. Yeah, I'm going to enjoy the rest of the show. I don't know, man. I might. Shit. I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm running out of space, as you can see on the screen. So <laughs> I got to, I, I don't know, man. I need to just sit down and upload all these videos to BitChute because I don't want to delete them and I, I just do it like piecemeal, but it's not enough, as you can see. So anyway... Um, yeah, it's kind of scary, like, political lawfare that we're seeing 
And I don't think this is justice. But again, this is America, and there's an appellate court you can, you know, appeal to. So, hopefully this doesn't stand. The man didn't even enter the Capitol. Man, it's like weird. You can't find one person on a jury in D.C. that just does the right thing and hangs the jury. There's like, no way. I'm not fucking so, no, fuck that. This is bullshit. He wasn't even there. And what, these text messages are completely unrelated. But that's the world we live in, unfortunately. And that's why I do my part to try to kick these people in the teeth and just talk to you people. I don't know. It's kind of like just a hobby. Just you know, speaking. <laughs> it's weird hearing myself speak to you. Being a YouTuber, you hear yourself speak a lot. <laughs> it's like, and you hear yourself fuck up a lot too. It's like, uh, fuck, I should have said that better. Could have, whatever. Anyway, I don't know. What do you guys think? What do you think about, uh, was this justice? 18 years. But I don't think it's going to be 18 years. I think that this is like legit solid grounds for an appeals court that isn't biased to come in. But like I was saying, I don't know how D.C. courts and all that shit works. It, like Washington, D.C. is very interesting. In fact, here, because I'm a dork, I'll tell you something. Alexander Hamilton negotiated with someone, I forgot who, and he was like, yeah, fine. It, like this person thought that it would be like, if you will let me decide where the capital is, I'll let you be the treasury secretary. As if, like, he was like, yeah, I don't care. I don't give a fuck where the capital is. So he, like, thought he made this great deal. Well, the capital is going to be in Washington, D.C., which is funny. It was a swamp. <laughs> it literally was a swamp. And uh, so that's where the capital is going to be. And I was going to Hamilton didn't give a fuck where the capital was. And after, he was just like, anyway, Alexander Hamilton, one of my favorite founding fathers, he was the first treasury secretary. And, you know, he made a big deal of, like, all of the state's debts were like taken care of by the federal government and you didn't need like 13 different kinds of money and all like yeah like it was it was interesting like um that washington dc was like made on an agreement with alexander hamilton with this other fucking guy and I, this guy thought aha i got to pick where the capital is but the capital is like weird because it's not supposed to be part of any state. That's why it's called the District of Columbia. It's not part of like Mass. It's not part of like Virginia. It's not part. It's like its own place, right? Like it's not part of any state because it was said that if any like state actually, if the capital is actually in a state, it would be like, I don't know, there'd be like some undue, I don't know. They just thought that'd be bad. So these Washington, D.C. is actually just carved out and it's not really part of any state so i don't know how the jurisdiction and the laws and the appeals process work there but i'm sure that they've already figured this out and i'm not a lawyer that being said injustice or justice <laughs> like what is this is this uh mercy for my friends and the law for my enemies and that's how i look at it and that being said i'll end the video here i hope all of you have a wonderful day and i'll see you in my next video have a good one good night bye